All right, so I'm McKinley and this is Dean, and we're doing our presentation on soccer. Now, we chose soccer because we both enjoy it. We're both varsity soccer players, and uh, obviously we, we thought there would be plenty of math, um, so it was a little difficult to narrow it down on what we were going to do. And lastly, soccer is just awesome. So, so we decided that'd be a good place to be. Everyone should have done soccer. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, soccer was originally invented in China in the second century BC, um, but Europe in the 18, 1863 developed the rules that we now use in modern day soccer. In uh, 1921, uh, America had the first American League and it was able to compete at a level with the Europeans. Um, sadly, in the 1980s, there was a decline in involvement in the US soccer programs. Uh, but now we're back, getting back up there, and in 2014 they were at the World Cup, and uh, Tim Howard put on a good show in that. <laughs> so. Tim Howard is our goalie. Right? No one has that reference. I have a little preference towards goalies. <laughs> All right, um, so this is our first um, getting into the math here. I did, this is a running interval of um, times between 125 uh, yard sprints. And this is just showing my velocity decreasing in yards per second, which is a very, very common uh, unit to measurement there. But uh, it's my decreasing velocity there. And then this is the graph um, showing. And now getting into Raymond's sums, um, this is that same graph in both of these pictures here. Um, this one's running on the right Raymond sums. And since I ran 125 yards and I did six, um, six intervals of it, I should be at uh, 750 yards. Um, so this is just an uh, underestimate, considering that the graph is decreasing and we're using the right ring on the sum. And on this side, since the graph is still decreasing, um, but we're using left ring on sums, we have an overestimate. Um, so that's where you get the 798. And this part here, it's a little bit hard, but it's a it turns out to be a piecewise function because if we continued this function, my initial velocity would have been like 15. So <laughs> actually it would have been about 11. So we assumed that my first interval was my max speed. And so we started with the piecewise uh, horizontal linear graph and then came into the cubic graph. That I want to say real fast, okay. McKinley is out of season, so <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> not as his best. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, um, so you saw how those uh, diff were pretty far apart from the 750. Um, coming into trapezoidal sums, it's a lot closer here. We're just a little bit of an underestimate considering that it is a decreasing function. Now we got some, a little bit of history. Um, Bernhard Bern, Bern Raymond, um, he was always into math. Uh, ever since a kid, he was really into math. And, so he first started his, or his first lecture was in 1854, which is where he really started to work in to solidify like actual processes. And one of his processes that came about was the Raymond sums. This is the, his original, or the notation of the Raymond sum that we saw a very long time ago and we're very scared of it. But now it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward for us. Um, and this finally is the actual integration of the graph, of that same graph. So we got, um, this is the cubic function here, and we're running it from zero seconds to 105.8 seconds. Um, and then this just shows the differences here. Um, the difference in the left rim on sum was 47, right was 25, and trapezoidal was only seven. So it just plays out the, how more efficient the trapezoidal is than the left and the right rim ones. And now, a uh, big key part about being a goalie is the penalty kick. This occurs when uh, there's a foul inside the 18, and the ball is set up about 12 yards away, and it's just the player and the goalie. Um, there's typically three reactions to the penalty kick. A goalie either stands in one place and just jumps up. Uh, either he falls over in place one way or the other, or he leaps from left or right. Now, these images Thanks to my brother, um, I recorded him. He uh, was a JV goalie. Um, but he, I recorded him doing the motions and then spliced them together in uh, Photoshop to enter them into our tracker application on our laptops. Um, but the area of the goal 
you can either do in feet, which is 8 by 24 for a total of 192, or transferring it to meters, which is a more, little more common measurement, we get the final total of 17.837. Um, we're going to be using integration and integrals um, created by Newton and Leibniz. The problem is they both invented it about the same time in the 17th century. Um, however, Newton favored geometrics and uh, Leibniz was analysis. But since they both created it at the same time, they were in a constant battle of who stole whose work. Um, we nowadays use uh, more of Leibniz because Newton was more for his own design and he didn't come down with the concrete thing he used every single time. So over here we have our function we're going to be using, um, integrating from A to B underneath our curve. So plugging our uh, images into the tracker, we were able to plot points and create an x-axis um, by adding in a, a calibration stick, a reference point um, of the net from the 2.43 meters and the 7 across, um, and then creating a line of best fit. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but it's as close as we're going to be able to get with that data. Um, we were able to come up with the function for the smallest one and then integrate that from negative 3.90 to uh, 0.065 and come up with uh, 5.64 meters covered. If we then switch to the little bit larger area of him falling one way or the other, he has a total area of being able to cover 6.19728 meters. Uh, this was, again, with the tracker and then creating our function. Um, obviously, you can't cover both directions at the same time, so we're going to have to pick. But then on the larger one, we were able to integrate from negative 3.9 to 3.7 and come out with the 13.217, the which is much closer to our original 17. Um, so obviously, this is the best option for a goalie to pick because he can cover the most area. But most goalies have a problem reaching these upper corners, which I can say from experience this year, it's extremely hard to block a shot up there. <laughs> um, but there are the major pros that can do it, and I wish we had one of them <laughs> to take data from. To now. Yes. All right. So now, this is just showing you a soccer field because this next portion will be um, me calling this the reference point, and then finding the changing an angle as you move across the 18 yard line. So here is a little bit closer picture. Um, so you can see, if you say this is your zero, your angle here to the goal is different than your angle here. And obviously you'd much rather take a shot straight on than from the side because your angle is smaller. And so next, after this slide, I'll have a program that I made to give me my instantaneous, or the derivative and the actual um, theta. But how I did so, I made a triangle here, and I made a triangle here, and used inverse tangent to find the difference, to find that angle there. I understood him at this point, and then when he goes to the next slide, that's when he lost me. So this is a program that I wrote. Um, it's pretty simple overall, but this is just the main, the actual script. Um, and then when you run it, it asks you how far away you are from the center of the goal. So the center of the goal, and then your displacement horizontally from that point. And when you run it, you get your angle and radians, degrees, and then you also get how much the radians and degrees is changing at that point. So if you took one step farther over, you would know how much your angle is changing. And then demo, right? Oh, I hit two All right. So now this is the function that I got from that program. Yeah, I put in the points, and then I ended up, this is finding theta here, and then at each point, this is how much is changing. So what's really cool about this is if you integrate either here or here, then you find the, it's the total amount of change of angle at that time, or over that period. So if I integrate it from 0 to 22, I get a negative 0 0.25 radians. And then if I and then the total change, so the change from here to here in the y-axis is 2.57 radians. 
and then with that same graph, um, realizing that when the derivative is zero, you're at your max or your minimum, this shows that my max is 25.05 degrees or 0.43 radians. So that would be the max angle for theta, and that is your position when you're at the origin or at the center of the goal. So lastly, with those, with that reference to the angles to the goals, I took the derivative of the function to find how much my angle would be changing within one step or an infinity small, an infinite small step. So the integrals, much like or the derivatives, are a lot like the integrals in that Leibniz and Newton pretty much fought over territory of it. Um, <laughs> right. And so, um, but it was Newton ultimately that found the relationship between the derivative and the integral, which is the same relationship that is found here, su such that the integral, the area under this, is the amount of change throughout the theta overall. And then it was actually Leibniz who thought, gave the more realistic and more usable uh, notations for each, the derivative and the integral. Want to still just show the program? Oh, yeah. So, eh, never mind, I, won't, I don't know how to do the projector. But yeah, so that program that I had on there, oh, okay. it, I can change it for any, any area with any distance from zero on that 22 amount. All right, and so um, the way there it is. take it off. See, for Ramon as a computer guy, I am. I'm uh, anti-computer. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to go full screen. I don't do that. Sorry, but uh, McKinley is very smart with computers, obviously and does the programming, and I was with him very far until he got to this and started writing his right. code. So at any point I am, it will ask me the displacement from the center of the goal. Anywhere within 22, if I put 12, it'll give me goal in radians, degrees, and the um, derivatives of such. And if I throw in a 23, the 18 yard line is only 22 yards. So it says the player is not on the 18 yard line. Mm. Um, and that is all just put together, words to computers, all good stuff in there. So that is calculus and soccer.